Howdy folks. Let's create a couple of very basic tests to get a little bit more familiar with selectors and how WebDriver works. So what we're going to do is we're going to be on this, this same uh, website here. And let's go to, what we want to do is let's, let's validate our form authentication. So let's click that. And then what we're going to want to do is we want to enter a, we want to verify that the login page doesn't allow us to log in with a invalid username. So let's fill out some random username, password, click login. And you see how your username is invalid. That's what we want to verify. We want to make sure that if we have an invalid username, that that shows up and doesn't let us log in. All right, so let's do that now. Let's go back to the homepage here. So I've created a new file, form authentication test.js. Remember describe hook, we've got chai's expect imported. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get to this URL. So we can do browser.url. And that's lowercase. All right, so this will open up a page for us. I'm going to put this in a before each hook. Um, so the before each, if you remember, that will run before any it gets called. Um, should not allow login with invalid username. The it's you just kind of want to, you want to put a, a decent description of what it's actually doing. So if it errors out to the end user, they know what's going on and what failed easy enough. All right. So now we're going to be brought to this page. And what we want to do is we want to click this form authentication link. So let's see how we can do that. So we learned about how to do that from the previous video. Let's try another way. So we could see how it has that href of login. So we could grab it by doing this, a equals form, form authentication. We can also use an attribute selector of href, which is the href, and then whatever that equals, which is login. Either way works. Um, this right here is valid CSS selector. So I prefer that if possible. That's fine, but now we can just click like that. All right, so that should click our link. All right, so let's actually verify that. Um, let's run this and it looks like it passed. That went fast, but so no errors, so that's good. All right, so now we're gonna be on this page. What we need to do is we need to fill out the username and password so we can have an error out. So let's inspect this input here. And let's see, how, how are we gonna grab this element? There's a few different ways we can do it. We can use the attribute selector of name equal username, or we could use the ID of username. Let's do the ID of username this time. So we can just do, and that'll select our element. And what we need to do is we need to add a value to, into this input. And we can do that with the add value command from WebDriver. And let's just put any random value in there. All right. So now let's do the, let's find the password. Let's inspect that. That also has an ID of password. That makes it very simple to, to grab. So let's just do ID of password. Uh, let's do add value. Foo bar. Good. So I'm gonna, let's, let's run this. Let's put a pause in there so we can see that it gets filled in. All right, so now this should open up this page and fill in these two input boxes. 
So let's see if this works. All right, perfect, it did. So it filled in the username with foo and the password with the bar. So boom, boom. All right, so let's kill that. All right, the next thing we need to do is we need to submit this. What we need to do is we need to be able to click this button somehow. Let's see, all right, so we've got a button here. So there's a couple different ways we can do this. Let's use the attribute um, selector here, CSS attribute selector. Let's find the type is equal to submit. Let's do it that way. So we can do type submit. So we can do this. Um, what that does, the, the attribute is, is actually, you can see you have the square brackets around the type equal submit. That's what dictates that it's an attribute selector. All right, so we've got that. So what we want to do is we want to click it. All right, so let's let's do that. So we should get that red error message now. Perfect. So let's go back here. Let's let's get it up here. All right. So now we need to we want to validate that this error message does come up and it has a, that correct text. So let's inspect that. And this has an ID on it as a flash, so that makes it easy to find. If you see this class of flash and error, so we could actually target it by that if we wanted to. But let's target it by the ID of flash. So what we need to do is we need to find that. So let's do, Flash, and if you didn't notice um, the, the pound sign here, that's what means that's an ID. So since we have pound flash, that's grabbing that. If we did period flash, that's gonna grab this class here. So classes have the period, IDs have the hash. Yeah. All right, so we have that. So what we want to do is Let's, um, we need to get the text of that. So let's get the flash and then get text. Actually, let's, let's make sure that it actually, so that's fine. Let's do that. So let's get the text. Error is that. So now let's use our expect error dot two dot b. Let's just verify that it's this. Oh, actually, let's let's make sure it's displayed because maybe it's it's not displayed and like this could just be hidden. So let let's let's grab this. Let's do wait for display to make sure it, let's let's make sure it actually is displayed before we do anything. If it never gets to displayed, then it's going to error out. Um, if you're on version four, the wait for displayed is actually new in version five. So before it would be wait for visible. Uh, so that's that. And you'll also notice that like I have duplicate here flash and flash. There's multiple multiple better ways you could do this. For one, you could use a page object, which I'm not gonna go into now. Um, I'll get into that in a uh, future video. But for this basic test, we're not gonna worry too much about it. So now we're gonna wait for this bar to be visible on the screen, because maybe it's hidden. We wanna make sure it actually displays the user. And then once it gets displayed, let's verify that the text matches this text. So we know that this is correct here. So we want to make sure that this never breaks in the future. So let's just copy this. My mouse will work. All right. So we got that. So let's, we can get rid of this pause. 
We just want to verify that this works. Ah, uh, something, something didn't work. Um, so if you see, it tried to do it three times too. Um, so try dot two B is not a function. Oh, I could do two dot two equal. That's what we want. Is something went wrong. Uh, okay, it's, it's got some funny text at the end. So we know that's right, so we can just copy that. That's fine. We'll copy that into here. Um, all right, so now that should work. Perfect, so now our, our test passed. So you can see that. So perfect, so let's actually, let's create another test. Let's test that forgot. Well, let's, let's, let's just go forgot password. So let's reset the password. We're gonna do this in the same it, just for the heck of it. You would probably have a different spec file for this, but this will show multiple its. So let's do, should, so let's actually do this. Let's, let's put some email in, treat the password, and we wanna see that this is actually displayed. So let's go back here, forgot password. So let's instead of what we did before here, let's let's um let's use what we previously learned. Let's actually should send for God some password link or something like that. And since we were using before each this browser.url is gonna open when this it happens. So it opens for this one and it's gonna open for this one. And this it's gonna run first. And once that it is done, it will now go to this it. It won't run them both at the same time. But we can select this link by doing the a equals forgot password. Let's click that. We're gonna assume that that works. And then now we need to find this field. Let's do instead of ID equals email, let's do name is equal to email. Do name, email, do add value, do just foobar. And then we wanna click this. So let's click and it's got an ID of form submit or type of submit. Let's use the ID of form submit. So we're gonna click this and then what do we wanna do? Now we wanna verify that this text comes up and is visible. So it says an ID of content Do message. So we can do expect. To equal, let's just copy this. Not sure if this will have any funny characters in it like the last one, we'll find out. We can do that. Perfect. So, Let's see if this works. Perfect, so it worked. So if you noticed, it ran this one first and then this one second. So let's actually, let's, let's error this one out just so you can see.
And you can see it's actually doing the retry. So we have the retry set to two in our config file, if you remember. Um, but you can see one passed. The should send forgot password link passed. But the login form here did not pass. All right, good. So that's just basic overview of some tests. In, in the upcoming videos, I will go over more methods and more common methods that WebDriver has to offer to, to do with forms and drop downs, check boxes, drag and drop, and different things like that.